now let's start getting to some of the ones that I've uh, added to aircraft carrier and if you look I used actually used Gorilla Glue and some cuts to make the water look like it's churned up behind the, the boat and if you look really close see how good I can zoom in on these it may not focus I just need to have my hand there I do it very slowly see the aircraft you can see they have tails on them This one is supposed to be an Avro Arrow in tribute, and you can see the mule used to move it. So, to give you an indication of the size. Once again, the .7 lead. So, when you look at these jets here, fuselages are 0.7 thick. You can see the steam catapults. the mule and the aircraft there. Then I'll give you an indication of how big that mule is if I can. It is just over one sixteenth of an inch. Length of the Avro Arrow there, three sixteenths of an inch. So when I zoom back. and a quarter. Just over an inch and a quarter long. So, yeah, very small. But those planes were carved separately and then glued on. I don't know if you recognize those. That's a belly tank racer. And if you'll notice, the engine's a different color. It's got the fuel injection stacks on it, the header, the exhaust coming off the back, and the seat with a steering wheel. You can see the, uh, the uh, upper and lower control arms on the front suspension. <coughs> This was a land speed record belly tank car. And I did the engine out of a different color just because I could. So it was a scrap from one of the other golf balls. And then glued in. Here's one that it was, was all done with one golf ball. But it took a lot of cutting and shaving and re-gluing. The only thing that's not from the golf ball are these the little pins and the little plastic discs. Which 
this is the Memphis Bell. You can see the gunner, gunner window. And this was done gluing the, you can see where the, there's the, there's one seam down here. You can see another seam right there. Also, the wings were formed out of multiple pieces. The engines were also added on separately. But you can just faintly see a seam there and a seam there. And these were all cut. And also the tail section pieces were glued on as well. But this was all done using the guts out of this single ball. I didn't cut, get use any guts from a second ball. So to get er enough ball to make all the pieces was a little bit tricky. But there you go. And it's got a uh, three inch wingspan. Bell. And there is a little bit of detail on the, the nose glass and also on the, for the tail gunner there. Okay, here we have a small steam engine. This is another one of the ones that uh, I did in a single cut. No additions. You see the back? This would be a small switcher. It doesn't have a tender on it. Even the uh, smokestack is hollow. And you can see the uh, cow catcher. Three quarters of an inch long. This one's a Spalding range ball. And quite often when I carve golf balls that have names on them, I try and keep the names intact. I don't know why, I just, something I do. And you notice this one has slots in the sides. These pieces are removable. And if you look, you can see through to the other side. You can see the white there. This was also done as a single cut. And this is a, another ball. If you look, it's kind of grainy. This is another one that was difficult because it would flake off. So, you see the small engine there, lumber, and you also have the first of a couple of box cars here going into the tunnel. Coming out of the tunnel is the second box car. Then we have a, a tanker car, a box car with uh, open doors and if you look if you watch this see there is actually opening not just through the car but into into the ends of the car not very far but they are there and then the caboose 
So that's another one of my uh, another one of my trains. A train going in a tunnel. How about a road grader? You can see there is a very small amount of detail in the engine. This is a the, the same .7 pencil that I've been using. You can see the stack on it, the windows. Here's the uh, the step with integrated, you know, it's it's like a, a, the fuel tank with integrated step. And you got the grader itself, the blade, front end, and the other tank on this side. And what I did was I took some of the shavings as I was carving it and actually mixed them up with, uh, put some crazy glue down and then sprinkled them on top so it looks like it's actually plowing something. So it's actually, looks like it is forming a, a row by plowing. And at the back you can see where the grill is for the for the radiator. So the road grader. Here's a backhoe. And I did have a little trouble. If you look, you can see a small hole right there in the bucket. I didn't bother doing anything about it. I was just cutting it so thin that I finally poked through. But if you look the the uh, the rear the rear bucket here, if I can get in there, the rear the rear bucket here actually is hollowed out. You can see that, and the outriggers are in the stored or transport position, and they do have the foot pads on them as well. If you're a hockey fan, you know what it is. It's an ice resurfacer, also known as a Zamboni. It's got four propane tanks on it for fuel. And it's got the, the ice resurfacer down. And if you look, you can see I put a little bit of glue on here to make it look like the water spraying up which sprays up and then flows down the back to, to re-ice. Um, unfortunately, when I was doing this one, the seat broke off and I had to glue it back on. And I also had a problem here where I, I nicked it and had to glue this piece back on where the steering wheel is. But there is the seat on it. Steering wheel. So, there you go, a nice resurfacer. Let's take a look. Three quarters of an inch. I'm gonna let you go. Catch you later. Have a good one.